The Ortsen effect is a technique wherein you overlay two or more images of the same subject, except the second and preceding images will have been shot at a different time or have somewhat different processing, so that the new layers will add their information to the original image. They especially add low frequency information pertaining to luminance and color, but they also add detail. A well-executed Orton effect does magical things with color and creates a kind of glow within an image. The Orton effect can do wonderful things with landscape photography and, if gently executed, can do great things with portrait photography as well. This is an image I shot in October a couple years ago of the landscape around my homestead. It's a little blown out in the upper right and no Orton effect has been applied. But watch what happens when we do apply an Orton effect. When the Orton effect is applied to an image, it enhances detail and saturation, while a subdued Gaussian effect on one of the upper layers creates a kind of ethereal glow around the subjects and structures within an image. It gives everything a dreamscape cast. What if we were to take the Orton effect, intended for landscape photography and portraiture, and apply it to astrophoto images? It turns out, when executed well, it does wonders for an image. Let's take a look. This is an image of the Rosette Nebula that I shot last autumn. As it stands right now, I think it's pretty good. It has good saturation and good detail captured within the image. So, what could the Orton effect possibly do to enhance this? Well, I'm going to prepare to edit this image by duplicating the background layer three times. As always, the lowest layer will be locked and made invisible so it can serve as a proof layer. I'm going to label the second layer our original layer, since it will be the original image and remain untouched and unedited. The third layer from the bottom will be layered the glow screen layer. It will have a screen composite applied to it so that it adds all of its qualities to the original layer below. And finally, the upper layer is layered glow, vivid, or linear, because when it's time, we'll apply a vivid or linear composite mode to it so that it applies its colors to the layers below. Now in the glow screen layer, the first thing that I'm going to do is add a Gaussian blur, and we're going to increase the blur to about 20 pixels. This is going to put a lot of blur in that layer. Then we'll change the composite modes on the glow screen layer to screen, and it will add its qualities to the image below. This will brighten the image below, and the Gaussian blur will create a sort of ethereal haze around the structures within the image. Now in the Gaussian blur layer, I'm going to click the blend options icon, which is above and to the right of the layers panel. And in the left window, I'm going to draw the diagonal partially down. This will restrict the luminosity that the Gaussian blur can affect. It's like drawing a gate partly closed so that the Gaussian blur can not affect the darker parts of the image. We do this because with the Ortsen effect, we generally want the dreamy cast on brighter areas. That looks pretty good. Now in the screen layer itself, I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 50%. This will constrict the Gaussian blur even further so that it's only operating on the brightest parts, but the screen layer will add its luminosity and detail to the image overall, brightening and sharpening the image. Now on the linear or vivid layer, I think I'm going to go with the vivid composite mode. And as you can see, when it's applied at 100%, the image is completely hypersaturated. Talk about posterization. But all we have to do to mitigate this is draw down the opacity. In fact, we want to draw it down way down, somewhere to between 20 and 30%. In the end, I decided on 20%. And I also put a brightness contrast tool within the linear or vivid layer and dragged the brightness down to negative 24%, giving us this as a final image. Let's take a look at the technical side of this outcome. It looks like there might be a little clipping of the blue channel on the high side, but apart from that, nearly all the saturation data has been retained. So, for the cost of that small bit of clipping, what did we get from applying the Orton effect to the rosette? To answer that question, let's take a look at the rosette nebula before and after applying the Orton effect. The image on the left does not have the Orton effect. One could easily say that it is more accurate to the original Rosette Nebula, but the colors are duller and a bit listless. And it may, though it's almost invisible, retain just a little bit more detail in blue areas of the image. The image on the right has the Orton effect, and at an extremely slight cost to detail in the blue areas, we find the colors are much enriched and enhanced without hypersaturation. Now this version of the Rosette Nebula on the right with the Ortsin effect portrays the effect in the typical way, with the Gaussian blur applied to the image over the original layer. 
But we astrophotographers typically are not looking to add a dreamy cast to our images. We want sharpness. So here is a rendition of the Reset Nebula with the Ortsin effect applied, but the Gaussian effect removed. It's very easy to do the Ortsin effect this way, just don't make a Gaussian layer. And once again, we get punchier colors and additional sharpness because we are laying over the high frequency detail from the two layers above the original layer, which are screen composited and vivid light composited onto the information below. So applying the Ortsin effect we see can be very successful with astrophotography. We get some nice punchy color without hypersaturation, and we even manage to squeeze in some sharper, crisper detail into the image. So I would say applying the Ortsin effect to at least some astrophotography images is a good idea. Though to keep the image as sharp as possible, just leave out the Gaussian effect in the screen layer. Just consider this technique one more tool in your astro image developing repertoire. That's all for now and thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please take a moment to hit that like button and also I'd sure appreciate it if you subscribed. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.